Welcome, one and all, to another edition of the Default Show. It'll be here on the Five Reasons Sports Network, brought to you by Water Cleanup of Florida. I'm talking about it a lot lately, uh, even before recently when we found some stuff on our home and felt like it was time to get some remediation done. I've now become very familiar with that term because of Water Cleanup of Florida. We've talked about how they have over 60 years of combined experience with Michael Robert and their team, that they have licensed contractors, that you can reach out to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And look, when the company says that, you want to believe it. I believed it. I know them well. But the fact that I faced it, I've dealt with it, dealt with them personally, it's 100% accurate. You reach out to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They will get back to you. They will come out. They will check out what's wrong with your home. They will do give you that estimate. Then they'll do it around the numbers and they'll get back to you quickly with an estimate, with a day, with a time. They'll give you the instructions of what they need you to do and they'll come out and they'll take care of it. Not a lot of people do that. Water Clean by Florida does that. They get the job done swiftly, easily, efficiently. And like I've said, they make your life easier and stress-free, which is something we all wish we had more of. At least I know I do. And I presume you probably do too. Nice and easy, just give them a call, 24-7-954-579-0356, 954-579-0356, or visit the website at WCUFL.com, WCUFL.com, reach them on their socials, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Water Cleanup FL. If you mention five reasons or Luby, you will get a free inspection during business hours. Water Cleanup of Florida, we clean up your schmutz. NBA free agency opens today. It is one of my favorite days of the year. Yes, the season's done. No action. Well, lots of action. And the Miami Heat are usually right in the thick of it. We talk with Bally Sports Florida, Miami Heat analyst, longtime NBA head coach and assistant coach, longtime Miami Heat coach. The one and only coach Ron Rossing joined us today to talk about the Miami Heat, their needs, their desires, who he thinks they can get, who he'd like them to have, and about the roster that stands today in the season that happened. Right now, the Diva Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Jeff DeForest and Mike Luby Lubitz. And uh, this happens to be a day that Luby believes should be declared a national holiday. <laughs> it's his favorite day of speculation <laughs> and chasing rumors and uh, all kinds of stories and what could potentially be from a sporting standpoint uh, declared as fake news, not to work. 45 into the equation here, but uh, he, he loves the start, the advent of NBA free agency. And we wanted to dive into this uh, a little bit here on the program today. But uh, before we do, and we want to introduce very special guest, uh, one of our favorites all time uh, to talk uh, anything with, uh, and especially NBA basketball and Miami Heat basketball in particular, uh, the great Ron Rostein, original coach of the Miami Heat, now with the uh, Heat broadcast team, does an outstanding job uh, with his analysis and uh, views on the game, and uh, always a pleasure to talk with him. Uh, Ron, welcome to the show. How are you this fine morning? I'm good, Keith. How are you doing? I'm okay, you know, a little bit for Klempt here because I'm trying to follow all of these uh, different maneuvers that are being made in the NBA, and uh, you know, it's interesting, and I want to get your thoughts about the Miami Heat season, uh, but we were talking about this earlier this morning on one of our shows, uh, uh, saying that uh, the NBA salary cap, uh, I, I know uh, Andy Ellisberg does a tremendous job, but it might be more difficult to understand. I, I don't even know if the great mathematicians of the world can understand what goes on with the NBA salary cap. Even Rene Descartes would be uh, thinking, my God, it's just like a Rubik's Cube to me. Um, and, and yet it seems like there are so many different variables uh, you know, to deal with it and, and work your way around it somehow. Uh, including, I didn't even realize that there was an early bird rule, which uh, I'm thinking was conceived somewhere at like Wolfie's Rascal House uh, here on Miami <laughs> Beach at, at some point in time. <laughs> I mean, is, is there anybody in the league outside of, uh, you know, a handful of people that work in the front office that have any full grasp of what goes on with NBA salary caps, Coach? Yeah, so there are a few guys that follow it. There are a few guys that specialize in it. I can't give you any names off the top of my head, but uh, some people pay very close attention to it and study it. Um, you know, years ago, when my son was in law school. He wrote a paper about the salary cap back in the 90s. Oh, wow. And it was pretty interesting. He did a deep dive. And since that point in time, the cap has evolved over the years. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts. And... Um, the league has changed things over the years to uh, 
sometimes be more favorable to the players, sometimes more favorable to the team. But it's an ongoing, uh, it's an ongoing operation. And really what the salary cap is, profit share. Basically what it is. Mm-hmm. And you break it down. You know, 50, 50% of the owners, 50% of the players. It's not exactly 50. They work it out sometimes. It's 52, 48. At one point, I think it was 57, 43. They were the players. I think that was the highest. And the owner said, wait a second. That's not going to apply anymore. So, uh, you know, we've had work stoppages because they couldn't agree to how to split the money. The money's always been there. Yeah. And the cap is derived out of gross income. Right? You know, and then you decide how you're going to break it up. And then each team, within each team, you know, you have rules for um, each level of player based on years involved and things of that nature. Great season for the Miami Heat. I mean, number one in the uh, NBA Eastern Conference during the regular season. Uh, they were terrific all year long, uh, established a good deal of depth on the roster. And, uh, you know, that whole Heat culture where it was constantly being bannered uh, about because of the fact that uh, they developed their own players and they're all hard-nosed and dedicated to the to the task at hand. Uh, from your perspective, uh, how would you capsulize the season and uh, – what, how how tough was it to get over that uh, seventh game loss to the Boston Celtics where uh, the Heat came within an eyelash of uh, going to the NBA Finals? And, and we saw where Boston was competitive with Golden State uh, to the point where they took them to six games. They didn't play uh, necessarily their best basketball, but uh, there certainly was the possibility the Heat could have been NBA champions. So uh, what, what were your feelings and what were your conclusions about the season? And where does that leave us uh, going into this uh, free agent signing period and, and coming up on next year? Well, I think I think that <clears throat> we were good enough to win the championship. Just came up a little short, and I think a big factor was injuries. And injuries play a huge factor in whether you win a championship or not. Always has, always will. And um, I've been involved in enough Eastern Conference Finals and NBA Finals to know that when your team is healthy, you have a great chance to win. And when you're not healthy, the other team is healthier, you're going to lose. It's as simple as that. So we had, I honestly believe Kyle Lowry is healthy, P.J. Tucker is healthy down the stretch. Um, Those two in particular, and plus Kyle Hero, that we're in the finals against Golden State. But I think our roster proved to be good enough. We're definitely contenders. We get to the seventh game and, you know, Jimmy takes that shot, it goes in, who knows what happens. Um, had a good look. A lot of people think that maybe he should have put on a four, another dribble or two, gone to the basket. But that, you know, that, that's on the play. He's got to make that decision on the fly. And um, it, I think it was a great season. But if you, you know, Pat said it was a great season with a sort of a, a, a rotten ending, disappointing. I think the word was disappointing and because they, they felt they were good enough to win a championship. As you looked at the uh, team, you know, and, and a lot of people felt that way uh, and the heat were among the favorites all season long to win the NBA title. And, and uh, they really established uh, a lot of different things, uh, some new things, but um, does the roster need to be tinkered with? There's uh, the possibility, I, I guess uh, people are saying uh, Tucker is going to end up somewhere else. And, uh, you know, uh, that uh, there, there might be some other changes. But um, what, what do you see? I mean, uh, is there a, a, an obvious or glaring need for this Miami Heat to address uh, during the offseason? I don't think so. I think, you know, sometimes you, you, you want to run it back. You want to bring back the same people, and that doesn't work. And other times, continuity really works. It's a tough call. Um, but I, I think that this group, we could bring this group back and see further development from some of the young guys, um, especially some, someone like Gertzibin, um, which gives us great, would give us you know, more size. The one thing I always felt that uh, could possibly hurt us was uh, size. 
And um, I still feel that way. Possibly another big wing player. But, you know, then again, if you go back, that's Tyler Hero. <laughs> so I think the other thing I think is I think P.J. Tucker is a very, very important part of what we did this past year. And I think it would be very, very important to bring him back. But there are limitations in what we can do needs to be the cap and give us enough flexibility to do whatever else might come along. You know, look, you have a board. Everybody has a board. You put stuff up on the board. You have a, a wish list. You have a list of your own free agents. You, you just you have to stay on it every single day. You don't know what's going to happen. You've got to be prepared because someday you never know. The phone will ring out of nowhere. And the world could be flipped upside down in terms of, you know, basketball. Coach, what are your thoughts? Uh, Tyler Hero and Bam Adebayo had great regular seasons. I, Hero shook off the sophomore rust, whatever it was, six man of the year, almost led the team in scoring, and then sort of dipped in the playoffs, and then he eventually had an injury. Bam was tremendous all year, really did all the intangibles in the playoffs. Some people were questioning his aggressiveness. But to me, it feels like they still have another level they can get to. What are your thoughts on Hero and Bam and their abilities to still grow and get to another level with their talents? I think you see an incremental, incremental growth in each of them. And I think you'll continue to see that. They're still young players. They still have, they, I don't think they've reached their prime. Uh, another couple of years, they'll be there. So I would expect that both of them will continue to improve and continue to grow and get better. Talking to the great Ron Rostein here on After Hours with Depot and Luby, Jeff DeForest, and uh, Mike Luby Lubitz. Uh, all right, uh, it would seem like, and uh, I don't know that this story really had any legs, but uh, when Kyrie Irving was uh, debating uh, what he was going to do with his future, which is always uh, an interesting thing uh, to try and psychoanalyze the mind of a madman or a seeming uh, madman, um, it would seem like to me, uh, Coach, that that Kyrie Irving would be the Antichrist to heat culture. <laughs> yep. Uh, could you, and you know Pat Riley a lot better than we do. I mean, we love Pat, uh, the iconic Pat Riley. Glad uh, he's still doing this at 77. But uh, uh, could he be at the point where uh, he would actually look at a player like Kyrie Irving and say, uh, you know what, that's exactly what we need to get over the top. What, would he be able to uh, have a guy like that on, on his roster? Or do you think there was really any interest there uh, whatsoever? One thing I know about Pat, he doesn't shy away from anything. That's yeah. number one. Number two, um, I think he he's always willing to put something on the table and give it a hard look. And number three, would he pull that trigger? I can't answer for him. But he's done some things over the years that some people said, you know, really shook their head and worked out really, really well. So, in my mind, I'm not that and fat. Whatever he wants to roll with, it's been a pretty good run. I think I'll stay with that. <laughs> That's he wouldn't go out and get Jalen Brunson just to uh, stick it to the New York Knicks, would he? I mean, uh, no. He, it's been 25 years, right, Coach? People, 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 everything's on the table. <laughs> no, it, it's... It has nothing, I don't think it has it. No, it has nothing to do with that. Okay, no, it, okay. it, has, it has to do. It has to do with putting the best team together for us yeah. to win a championship. Yeah, he's pretty good player, Jalen. It's funny too because it seems like the uh, Knicks are, uh, you know, still uh, paying. Uh, you know, a little bit of uh, retribution uh, to the Pistons uh, for the Dave DeBusher deal many years ago, where they sent him like uh, a washed-up Bell's Bellamy and Butch Comeives. <laughs> Uh, and, and now they're, they're willing to give him anything. I mean, they just traded like a bunch of draft picks, uh, you know, like for nobody. Uh, that, that was an incredible deal. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like that. I can't believe, I can't believe you brought up the Busher and, and uh, Bellamy and told my That's a great one. You're shocked, really? <laughs> that guy, the Knicks, their first ship. The first two ship. Yeah, uh, no the doubt, Busher. man. And they're still looking for more. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, they're still, uh, it seems like they're, they're still honoring whatever was left of uh, the remnants of that deal because uh, 
I looked at that trade the other day, and I, I couldn't figure out who they got back. For, for... There, not, <laughs> Can you there, there are not too nothing? many people listening to this. There are not too many people listening to this podcast know what you're talking about with Dave the Bushes. Paul Pellamy. <laughs> <laughs> That's part for the course. <laughs> Come on, having to be one of my favorites, uh, you know, of all time, because uh, he shot the ball so oh, well yeah. at Bowling Green and Butch. not so hot with the Knicks. Yeah, Butch, uh, left-hander uh, out of the oh, corner. Yeah. It, it was yeah. great. And now, and now uh, were you, I mean, uh, were, Comb Ives, uh, would he have been playing at a time when you were playing, Coach? I was, it, it, well, yeah, I was, in, I was in college when Comb Ives was with the Knicks. I, I just... When he, I think when he came to the Knicks, I'd just gotten out of college. Okay. So uh, were you having a pickup game with Butch Comines? Trying to I mean, trying to... <laughs> then I would have even greater no. respect for no, you I than never I already got... do, which is enormous. <laughs> no, I, ne- I, never, I, I never got in that pickup game. Nope. <laughs> All right. Uh, you look at, I mean, there's some, some, you know, all these names are out there uh, in terms of free agency that, that look to be uh, very appealing and attractive. Uh, uh, there, were, there were long conversations about the possibility of the Heat being interested in Bradley Beal, weren't there? He, uh, yep. uh, uh, you know, I mean, supposedly we don't know if this is true or not, has, has any foundation in reality, but uh, he's a free agent. Uh, you have Zach Levine, uh, you, Brunson, of course, much talked about here. Uh, James Harden, uh, to some extent, I, I guess, looks like he you know, was going to sacrifice cash for the good of Philadelphia, which, which may help them get PJ Tucker. I think that was the the rumor yeah. that yep. you know a lot of people believe to be true that uh, Tucker was going to end up there for like ten million a year on a three year guaranteed deal, uh, w- which is a lot to give a thirty seven year old guy. Although he still looked like he had his chops. Um, uh, DeAndre uh, Ayton, uh, you know, interesting. Uh, who who intrigues you the most about uh, where they might end up in, in terms of uh, free agency, and and what looks like uh, is it maybe a more obscure name that probably should be, you know, uh, much larger in focus uh, when it comes to a guy that was really going to come out and help a club. I don't know. You know, I listen to a lot of read a lot of the same things you do. Um, yeah, the guy that that to me. Harden, I think Harden staying in Philadelphia. I think Bradley Beal might be doing the same thing in Washington because I think he's stated for over and over he'd like to he'd like to play his whole career there. I don't know. Maybe things have changed. You never know what's going on with negotiations behind the scenes. Um, things can change on the drop of a dime. Um, to me, the guy who's most intriguing is a he's a restricted free agent. Phoenix doesn't want to give him the max, but they probably wouldn't match anything. I'd be very surprised if they let him go. But I don't know. I mean, I think he's a really good seven foot seven. And I think those are hard to find. I think he's a very I think he's a talented kid now. Supposedly he and Monty Williams had a falling out there in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. What that's all about, I don't know. <clears throat> But the, to me, he's the most intriguing of all those guys that are out. The uh, guy that he drafted, did that remind you at all of uh, the Martin Muricep draft where they only had artist renderings of the guy? No, no. <laughs> who is this guy? No, not really. No, well, they know who this guy is. They've seen him. Oh, okay. They've seen him play. <laughs> and this is not, not the same default two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I just remember being at that draft party and everybody was like, who the hell is this Martin Miracep? And uh, I, don't, I don't even think uh, anybody on, on the, in the Heat organization knew who he was at the time. I, I, did he ever set foot on a Heat basketball floor, Martin Miracep? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> uh, well, let's yeah, not oh, talk about I, the past. Uh, let's talk about today. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, it was a great season. I mean, we couldn't have enjoyed it anymore. I guess we could have if, uh, you know, one more shot had gone down uh, for the Miami Heat. And, uh, you know, they, they were in there with an excellent chance to beat the Boston Celtics. Uh, couldn't quite get over that uh, threshold. As you said, uh, injuries, we don't know to what extent it compromised. Even Jimmy Butler was uh, sort of in and out of lineup. Tyler Hero uh, compromised uh, in the uh, postseason as well. So it uh, could have been a whole different story if everybody was healthy. Uh, but, um, you know, we're looking forward to next year. And obviously the Heat have been uh, one of the premium organizations in all of sports. 
and uh, you know, always doing the right thing, it seems like, and, and always uh, going about their business in a terrific fashion. So, uh, you know, uh, there, there's great confidence here in town that uh, Pat Riley and the, and the boys in the front office will do the right thing again. Uh, Coach, always a pleasure, my friend. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. I really appreciate you taking time to talk basketball with us on uh, what literally is Luby's favorite day, and that is the opening day of free agency in the NBA. Thanks for being with us, my friend. All right, Luby. Take care of yourself, Luby. Don't get hurt. <laughs> I'll see you guys. You're the best okay. coach we Thanks have. A lot. All right, Coach Ron. Not Rossi, wrong. I do get coach. excited. I do have to calm myself down today. This is one of the best days of the year. Well, when did this become so much in vogue? Uh, to uh, you know, just go nuts about speculation on NBA free agency. Certainly here in Five Reasons Sports Network. Yeah, it, you know that that is going mean, with Scoop Skolnick. Uh, you know, fanning the flames. Yep. Although Scoop's not inclined to just uh, report idle rumor. I no, mean, it's he, not he hyperbole. Actually... Like, it's not lies. It's just yeah. he fa- the Heat have done this, and it was 2010. 2010, because for two years you heard about 2010. Like, 2008, yeah. they started talking about it. So once 2010 came and then there was a lot of movement of big names every year, whether it's Durant or Kawhi Leonard or even if it's a, the next level of guys that can help a winner uh, take it the next step. Like every year, it's become the big deal now, and it was because I, I that's when I started paying attention was that off season. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, uh, Pat Riley, uh, as uh, Ron Rothstein talked about, not afraid to make like a bold move that may be the antithesis of anything that uh, you would have expected from him uh, with regard to Heat culture and the type of player that uh, he does like to cultivate. And uh, yet, uh, you know, if there's a Kyrie Irving out there for the right deal, uh, I, I'm sure Pat was uh, willing to answer the phone if it rang and it was like uh, Sean Marks uh, from the uh, Brooklyn Nets front office. Uh, all right. Once again, thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the Devo Show with Luby here on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Coach Ron Rothstein likes Hero, likes Bam, sees him hitting another level, thinks the Heat can do more, but doesn't think they need to. If they can somehow, some way, keep P.J. Tucker, it's a scary roster. They are contenders. They were very close last year. And he feels he'll be close again. And I agree. We shall see. Happy opening of NBA Free Agency Day. We'll see what the Heat do. We'll see what the rest of the NBA does. Check us out in the morning, 7 to 9, just on YouTube or Google search South Florida Live. Search The Defoe Show with Luby. Check us out on the Believe Network. Today, Mike Vaccaro is our guest talking about New York sports. I know we're in South Florida. But it, it's always interesting what's going on in New York. And Riley is trying to <laughs> maybe screw the Knicks. So he, Mike Vaccaro is always very honest. Great sports columnist for the New York Post. Check him out. The Believe Network, B-L-E-A-V dot com. Search after hours. And each and every day right here, our South Florida skewed content, The Devo Show with Luby on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Play the ponies in style at Champions, the outstanding simulcasting room at beautiful Hylia Park. Yes, the grand old lady of thoroughbred racing has never been more vibrant, and you can wager on the races from the top tracks around the country while enjoying a cocktail at the Brass Rail Bar or any of the fine food served throughout the facility. If poker is your game, you're covered in style, and you can play all your favorite Vegas-style games, including blackjack, craps, and roulette in Hylia Park's sizzling hot casino. Get a player's card when you walk through the door for all kinds of generous amenities, including our favorite, free play, when you come out to the ultimate casino and entertainment destination, Hylia Park. These days, we're all looking for comfort anywhere we can find it. Thank goodness for Landlubbers Raw Bar and Grill in the plantation because they are making sure you are as comfortable as possible. First of all, they're not only open for delivery and pickup. All you have to do is go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both pickup and free delivery. You're going to have the best wings in the world. You're going to have a great burger. You're going to have their amazing soups. Again, Landlubbers, Raw Bar, and Grill. It's nice and easy. Just go to landlubbersbarandgrill.com for both your pickup and free delivery. Thank goodness for Landlubbers for making you always feel right at home.